<laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really grateful that, that you could join me today. I love it. I love this connection. And I love that we can, um, yeah, just take this time out to talk about something that does actually make a big difference in, in the big picture, in the big scheme of things. Hello. Hi, Melanie. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Come on in. Yeah, so we're just talking about um, just we've got the chat box going. If you've got any questions that come up while this is, you know, happening, instead of, um, I don't know, forgetting what you're going to say or whatever, <laughs> just feel free to, to type up questions in there. I'm going to keep checking that. Or, or even just feedback. If, if anything's resonating, um, you can type it up in there. So what I really wanted to bring for you in this meeting is not only just a connection to get a really good um, grip of, of where you are at and how I can serve you to bring your creativity or just it's, it's your being really to the next level. Um, I love that creativity has this power, this potential. When we feed it, it has this beautiful, powerful ripple out effect. And you'll start to see things shifting and changing in the way that you show up just in your life for the people that you love, in your relationships, in the way that you have a conversation even. <laughs> this, um, this beautiful shedding of weight, of, of the loading that we often feel in our lives, like this, this pressure to be something, to measure up as something, that is, you know, that is sent out in energy in our words and conversations and it, it's probably really subtle so that, most people don't pick up on it. But when you do feed this in your creativity, you'll start to notice things opening up. And that's what I want for you. That's why I'm doing this. So I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. So um, do, do talk to me um, if anything's resonating or if you have a question or anything else comes up, feel free just to, um, just to say it. I'm, I really want to connect with you. That's, that's what I want with you right where you are. So, so just speak to me, <laughs> speak to me in the chat box, or if you want, you know, if there's a pause and you've got a question, um, feel free just to, you know, just to ask away. So yeah, it's interesting how many people wanted to come, but they couldn't join us today. So they sent through um, questions and just, you know, a little bit of info about what they're struggling with. So I thought that would be a good place to start just to um, read through a few of those. Hi, Ellen. So welcome. Um, yeah, and, and just see where we go from here because I've got no real agenda other than to serve you today. So, um, yeah, that's where it comes in where I need to hear back from you what your questions or, you know, what's, what's resonating. So I'll just start with, um, I don't know, is it rude to say people's names who have written in? They haven't asked to be anonymous. I don't know. Maybe I'll just won't say it just in case. So this lady, she was a bit sad to miss this, but she wanted to know what kind of, cre what kind of creating schedule I maintain. <laughs> Do I... I don't know if I come across as a very scheduled person to you. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, this is maybe why this is such an issue because it kind of doesn't fit into schedules. Anyway, as in, do you paint every single day? Do you do things in batches like first layers first for a whole set of pieces? Or do you do one piece from start to finish plus mounting before moving on to the next? What do you find to help you stay focused and streamlined so you can access your best creativity? I'm mostly curious about people's process and what would be good for me to think about adopting. Yeah, so, um, yeah, really good question. And, and I think when you're unfamiliar um, with creative process for yourself, like you haven't done a whole lot of it, so it's, it's not... Um, there, there isn't this familiar schedule that you've realised for yourself and you've seen it's productive and, and all that kind of thing, that that would be a very fair question. Um, I'm not a, a very scheduled person. Like it's miraculous that I'm here at the time that I said. <laughs> 
I'm doing a lot better now that my heart is set on serving. I've had to really step it up and and pull myself into line. And I think that's um, that's the key here is what do you want out of this? Because when you get your motive right in, in its very deepest essence, what do I want out of this? So what do I want out of my creativity? What kind of, um, how, how should I approach this in my day to day to meet that goal? You know, because if your goal is to figure out a, a way of processing every day that is going to help you um, see something growing, you know, see yourself leveling up in your creativity, get more of a handle on your style and, and what you're here to say, what, what you're doing with this, with your art, you know, what, what really is it all about? So when you've got that, then I think some of these questions are answered just without, you know, worrying about it too much. Because if, if I'm really searching for something, I would need to do that every day, right? Even if it's just 10 or 15 minutes, if you're a busy mother or you've got a career, whatever it is, you would be so surprised how much just 10 or 15 minutes. If you've got somewhere to set up and leave it and come back to it, that's perfect. But just keeping up the consistency is, is the key and fitting, fitting it in wherever it can. So um, me as a, I've got four daughters and obviously a business. So uh, I don't really get to paint every day at the moment unless it's for creating content, which, you know, I've really had to level up to get to that stage <laughs> because there's a lot of pressure there. That's, that's a high pressure, um, you know, performance thing to have to do. But, you know, I think back to four or five years ago when I was just in the garage and just starting my Instagram account, I focused on just, just moving with the paint, just move. And, and not being worried too much if I didn't like what I painted that day. I obviously felt a little bit like, oh, <laughs> you know, if you've done a few things and it's a bit of a mess or you post it on Instagram and it doesn't go off and, you know, <laughs> it's just like, oh. <laughs> but I didn't stop. And that's the thing. That's the key. You just don't stop. <laughs> And it doesn't matter about all those paintings now. It, there's, there's no significance there whatsoever. So I think choosing not to be intimidated by failures or perceived failures is a big one. Choosing to continue regardless because, you know, I, I always come back to the ladder with my coaching in that Every single thing that you create is a rung in the ladder that is leading you up into that purest expression, that, that style that is yours, that's your voice, the, the, the message that you're here to say. And um, I think the deeper that we can go with that, the more you start to see yourself in a way that is too deep for words. There's, there's no describing it in words and that is powerful. When you get to that place and you start to see yourself speaking in a way that's too deep for words, you're speaking about really deep mysteries. Like let me just give you an example. Like um, it's only recently that I've realised this about my work, you know, in the last year or so. And teaching has had so much to do with that realisation. But with my work, it's all about collaborating with what already is so I take a load off because I'm here to set up this interaction and um and and hover over it and and orchestrate it but it is already beautiful the colors are already beautiful there are patterns and and things happening that will happen um to, to anyone mixing these together. But now I'm here, I get to choose what gets wiped off and, and what I'll add over this side. And um, I might tip the canvas now and see what happens. Um, but but this, this collaboration is freedom because so much less is required of me than what I first thought. You know, if you think of someone who has a canvas and they want to create this 
like realistic, you know, photo realistic landscape, how much goes into that? It's, it's almost, I mean, and it's, it's great. It's, it's remarkable. I'm not dissing it at all. Don't get me wrong, but it's, it's a totally different, um, it's, it's a different message. <laughs> it's like, I have practiced rendering light falling on the landscape and this is what I'm going to say about it. And, and I'm going to make it really tight and perfect, you know, and it's almost got like, although it's beautiful, it's for me, it's almost got that, that really tight kind of like precise, it's got to be right kind of feeling about it. <laughs> um, I do really enjoy landscapes that are a bit more flowy and painterly and have a bit of movement and a bit of more of that interaction that I'm talking about, you know, showing up with the colours and with the brush and just let's see what happens, you know. Um, I, I see that paint not properly mixed and just slapped on. There's a great beauty there and, and I want to incorporate that and it's not up to me. It's just up to me recognising it and inviting it into the interaction, right? So um, I think that lots of times we don't show up because we're feeling pressure like we've got to come up with something and it's all on us, like as if I'm a source. And I'm not a source. I'm a channel. I orchestrate this. You know, I'm, I'm just here holding, holding space for these things to have an interaction and I'm going to... Uh, invite other things as I see fit and if it all turns into a mess then you know it's still a rung in the ladder and if I'm watching as to why I think this is a mess and why I think this hasn't worked then um it's a really powerful rung in the ladder <laughs> because um it's it's giving me more insight into that messaging at my core what am I here to say something about beauty, something very unique about beauty. It's, it's my language that I'm trying to, um, trying to learn to speak here, you know. <sighs> Is this resonating? I don't know. I think I got way away from, yeah, we're talking about schedules. So, yeah, I, I would say that the best way to schedule is to, instead of worry about it so much in the headspace, because scheduling sounds like a real brain thing, right? It's um, that left-brained cognitive function that actually doesn't art very well. <laughs> it's not real good at creativity. It's awesome at responsibility and paying the bills and making sure you're here on time and putting words together and all those things. But when it comes to this collaboration that I'm talking about, it's not, it's not hot. It's... Um, it actually throws a spanner in the works because it tries to predict things and control things. And you can't do that in the collaboration that I'm talking about. So I would say with scheduling to, um, to start focusing in, in your process on, on the heart space. And sometimes that can even just be a decision of, you know, placing your hand on your heart and just, just checking in, talk to your heart, just say, where you are, I'm, I'm feeling for you. What's happening? You know, I want to connect. I want, I want you to be in this. And, and once you do that, um, you're, you're empowering that inner child, that, um, you know, that soul language, that, that becomes the most, um, it's, it's prioritized, right? So, I'd say if you're really having trouble fitting art into your day every day, that there may be a good way to schedule at least, you know, 15, 20 minutes, say um, after I've fed my little kids breakfast and they want to go and play for a bit, that's when I just pop into this room, you know, they're in their playroom and I just put some paint down and I'll come back later when it's dry and just see. Because what you do when you, when you kind of... Um, so to this consistency, you've got it kind of whirring away under everything else that happens in your day. And ooh, it can give you such a boost. Um, I know that when I've got a canvas that I'm waiting for the layers to dry, 
<laughs> and I'm like keeping on checking on it. And, you know, if I do it the night before and I wake up in the morning, it's, I just wake up with this, you know, this, this thrills like a kid on Christmas morning. I gotta go see how that dries. <laughs> so I think we're missing this from our life. We're missing this, this gift of process of interacting with process. It's so simple. Isn't that so simple? <laughs> <laughs> just to um, just to have something going. It's like sowing seeds and you want to come back and like, oh, have, have they popped yet? Popped. I don't think you say that about seeds anyway. <laughs> Ellen, I like to think of myself as vessel, just why I'm so flummoxed about what I posted about in the group. <laughs> but this is so beautiful, Ellen, because I, I love that you said all that because this is how we're going to smash through this stuff by um, being vulnerable and saying what it is and, and other people can often see through, you know, shed light on the issue in ways that you wouldn't have thought because you're so familiar with the problem and it doesn't seem to be the thing that it is. So for someone to, to come and say, oh, that's just, you know, you just need to come back to process. You're just um, getting stuck on product again, product pressure, whatever it is. <laughs> and you just go, oh, I got me again. You know, I even feel it with my, um, my content creation now. You just wouldn't believe it. This thing does not go away. I don't think it goes away. I think that we get strong. We build our muscles in, um, what's the word? Yeah, like combating it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Get out of here. I'm not going to speak or act from that thought. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, it's getting me with my membership even. Like often, especially if I'm feeling a bit flat, like last time it was that time of the month and I was just like, <laughs> but I showed up and I, I made something and I learned things for myself and I watched myself in process of dealing with that objection, which is, it's, I think it's a head objection, <laughs> but just saying, do you know what? I believe that if I show up and I lean into that wind, there's going to be something there to meet me. I don't have to come up with this. And I don't, and it won't be what I thought that it might be. And I'm not going to get tangled up in that either. I'm not going to, you know, get distracted by this thing, you know, trying to force this thing into a corner. <laughs> All right. Well, it's not the whole thing that I thought it would be, but it's something and it's showing me something new and I'm having this experience. So coming back to experience, coming back to um, protecting and cultivating experience. So what I mean by that is um, if, if you're worrying too much about schedules and um, whether something's supposed to look like this or that or whatever, that's going to affect your experience. When you do show up to paint, you've got that loading of, I've only got five minutes left to paint. Or oh, like um, it's, you know, I had this idea in my head and, and this color is all wrong and, Oh, you know, like we, we have these, um, these moments of, of real burdensome woe when, when it's not going the way that we wanted it to or expected it to. So I think, yeah, just releasing all expectation is a really good one too. Just um, having that wide open space ready for whatever will manifest come here and, and show yourself, you know, I'm ready for it, whatever it is. And if it's a failure, then I'm going to scrutinize the heck out of it and try and understand a bit more about what's, what, what, what is a failure to me? Why is this a failure? Why is it ugly? What do I want from it? What do I wish it was doing? What do I think would improve this? Where did it go wrong in the process? <laughs> this is what um, I didn't get a chance to talk back to your question, Ellen, in the, um, in the Facebook group, but this is what I was going to say is that when you time lapse, you set up your um, camera to time lapse your process and watch yourself back, especially if you feel like you're, um, you're happy at the beginning of your process, but then something goes wrong or you feel like you keep going too far 
and you're not sure like where to stop. Now, these are really common problems and it's all solved by process, by quantity in process. So the more that you show up and do it, I still go over like way over. It's, it's not one of those things that you're ever really going to, you know, get a handle on, I don't think, because every single painting's different. And, you know, the, yeah, just I think the variables and like you've just got to show up and sense it for what it is. And if you go overboard, just do what I'm saying and go back through and analyse, analyse the heck out of whatever you can <laughs> that is going to feed you. It's going to feed this, this deep wisdom on how to express that beauty that, that you're craving to express. That makes a lot of sense. That's Good. Ellen here. Hi. Awesome. Um, Hi, but Ellen. I'm curious to, <laughs> I'm curious to know what am I looking for in this time-lapse thing? Oh, I'm okay. watching it back. What am I looking for? Mm -hmm. So you're looking for where it stops being what you wanted to say, what you're enjoying looking at. What kind of marks are you making where you see it um, being less of that thing that excites you? So you were saying that your first brush strokes were just beautiful. You know, you, you were vibing with that. But as you progress, something happens. I don't know if it's, um, you know, I haven't seen your art. So, I mean, I saw that one that you posted, but like whether it's brush strokes, um, collective brush strokes or, or what's actually going on. But from what I saw of the piece that you posted, I'm, I'm picking up that you love that incidental kind of mark, mark making oh, yeah. those, those looks That's that. Favorite. Yeah, where like what I said to to you earlier, that collaboration. You've you've noticed something, you've recognized it, you've collected it, and now you're you're reworking it and customizing it <laughs> and and adventuring with that and having so much fun doing it. So we just need to figure out how to bring that freshness, that discovery back to your work on paper. So coming away from the cyanotypes, um, Ellen was just saying just for everyone else in the group earlier that uh, she loves working with cyanotypes and camera-less photography, um, yep. mm -hmm. finding organic things and, you know, working with that with this camera-less photography uh, and then painting back into it. So adding, was it um, watercolours? Yes, yeah, so adding color and, and pen. Yeah, awesome. So adding colors and, and kind of effects and details, not heaps. It was just a little bit of a tickle of it. You're kind of adding, adding a, a splash of color and just bringing it to a new level. Beautiful. I love that. I love that, um, that process. And it's very original. I haven't seen anything like that. So, um, when you set up to do your time lapse, you're looking for the marks that you loved the look of and where do they, at what point do they stop being that thing? And then you watch yourself, you watch the decisions that you're making about where you put your brush strokes and, and which direction and, and try and recall how you were feeling too, how you were like, were you feeling, um, oh no, I'm losing it. This is where it's getting ugly. I don't like it and I'm not sure what to do to change this because <laughs> if you have got those panicky thoughts, that is actually overriding the part of your brain that knows what to do. So you, it's, it's like kind of there's no chance now <laughs> because you're in that, oh, that's like the fight or flight freeze mode. <laughs> You've come away from that, that growth adventuring development mode. Um, so yeah, I would, I'd be really interested to hear about when you get to do that, what you notice. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to try it. I'm definitely going to try yeah. it because I, I, I feel, and it's so funny to me because like I said, I, I'm usually so present, you know, it's just when I, sometimes when I sit down to paint, I just completely, it's like I go somewhere, like mm -hmm. my conscious self leaves the room and then I look back at what I've, what I've done. And while I'm doing it, it feels fun. 
you know, because I'm splashing paint around and going way overboard, way over what I want to do. I have a very minimalist sort of aesthetic. And, and then I come back and I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> okay, so, so you're enjoying the process. It's just at the end yeah. that you're not liking what it is. So how much yeah. time would you spend painting in a week? Oh gosh. Well, yesterday I did the the exercise and I went in there about two 30 in the afternoon and I looked up at, you know, and it's like seven o'clock that night. Like, so I'm, I mean, I'm like, I'm there, I'm in it. I'm in it to win it. I am, you know, I have no issue with, with, with staying with it. It's just this weird disembodiment thing. I can't figure it out. So yeah, I'm definitely going to try that time-lapse thing. Cause maybe I'll, I'll see it. Cause yeah. I, that's the thing. I can't, uh, like I said in the in the chat, I'm in the fishbowl, and so I can't I can't see it mm. yet. Yeah, and when you do see it, I'm really excited for this because if you're <laughs> already feeling that the power of being present and and that kind of collaboration just with with time and space in other areas of your life, like you have no idea what's going to happen once you smash through this. <laughs> This part, because this is a little hold. This is actually something, and, and I'm so grateful um, for this observation because, because something has come forward now and said, no, we're not quite free, not quite free yet. There's another space. There's a whole big space down here for, for Ellen to occupy. Um, it's, it's being held up by, well, we don't know what yet, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And I love that about yeah. um, creativity because it's a teacher in itself. It, it is a teacher. When you learn how to listen, you go, oh, something's not right here. And, and this is all about, you know, just being connected to that very deepest, most beautiful part of yourself that's pure. Um, just re- like maintaining the connection there so that, so that you get that, um, that intuitive response that's where the intuitive intuition comes from just to be able to say, well, okay. um, How does it feel on me? (laughs) How's this feeling? Right. It's not, it's not right. There's something not right about this. And and it might not be what you first think, but if you keep processing and observing and talking to people who, you know, you trust would have an idea about this, that you will piece things together and it'll be like, there's a big aha moment coming for you. So I'm really excited. I am too. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome. Um, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. So I'll come back to, I've got three more questions here. Did anyone else who's happy with their processing and scheduling and all that, does anyone have anything to say about, uh, about this last question about the um, yeah, like process day-to-day kind of scheduling that helps with becoming a better artist no did I did I do good (laughs) didn't leave any any stone unturned there okay so we've got another one here um I struggle with self-doubt in showing or promoting my art because I get a huge energy boost when I have a large sale and I feel validated and much more bold to pursue avenues such as galleries, contests, public shows. I'm riding the wave at the moment, but it's, it'd be nice to feel this confident during times when I'm not having sales. Oh yes. I love this. I love it because it's so common happens to me. Who, who does this not happen to? Like something wonderful happens, uh, someone loves your work or you get this big break, you, you have a sale or um, I don't know, like when when Mimco contacted me and said, we want to put your artwork on our collection, <laughs> like I was pinching myself going, what? Um, yeah, huge things that give you such a boost and you walk into your studio all kind of like, yeah, I'm the man, <laughs> I run this thing. Um, it's tricky. We can't have that all the time because it's just not going to happen all the time. Even if someone's famous, you know, you're still going to have those in between times where you, you know, you're questioning 
is this, am I really this thing? Am I really up to this? <laughs> Maybe no one likes me anymore. Maybe they like my old stuff better than my new stuff, all that kind of thing. So um, we've got to go deeper. This is a, a superficial um, energy source because it's it depends on circumstance and, you know, other things other than me. Um, so we've got to take it deeper and and connecting to that deepest part of ourselves so that it's it's an, an interior validation. Um, you know, and that confidence from the deepest deep inside of me, uh, when I'm when I'm connected to that, like I actually don't need that stuff. It, it's great when it comes, but I'm not desperate for it. I don't need it. And I think that's all the more attractive, to be honest. I think that you open yourself up to a lot more possibility when you do um, come from that, that deepest, deep place in confidence. So if, if you're feeling this surge, energy surge, and then a depletion, that's just a, um, a signal to check. Where's my confidence coming from? Is it coming from external validation? Or do I need to check in with that deepest part of myself and make this a... Um, you know, bring some consistency into this, this truth in my process every day, in my consistent process. So when you show up and you're doing your 20 minutes of painting or however long it is, um, checking in with thought life during the process, what am I thinking about? Because while you're painting, if you're thinking about how's this going to look as a post on Instagram, <laughs> is this going to be good enough? So I'm going to buy this. Um, am I worth it? Am I, am I even, you know, what am I even doing here? Um, is this valuable? These are all the, the kinds of product pressure thoughts that are going to steer you away from your style, your message, developing that thing. It, it pulls you out of the headspace that that actually knows how to move forward, <laughs> knows how to do it well, knows how to connect you with your killer taste, which is there, you know, it's, it's buried and it's, it's asking to be searched for. It's asking for you to start unearthing and, and allowing it to come out and show you something, show you what you are, which is brilliant and so worth it so valuable this is treasure and this is you know this is the whole reason why I do what I do because um, much of our lifestyle is messaging us the opposite it's saying you've got to measure up you've got to you know figure out how to earn this um, so this this messaging although it's not like too obvious I mean advertising I don't watch telly but like if you've got a lot of av advertising coming at you you'd see it a lot more but um just just the messaging of of having to work really hard and get that money and pay the bills and and feel like you're not really getting anywhere um yeah just just the, the physical domain of of like things running out and, and you have to keep up the supply and you know I don't know it's just this it's this kind of a slavery that we're all caught in this wheel of um just grinding away well for what <laughs> what are we doing is it good enough is it valuable is it worth it I don't know <laughs> so taking that time out to to check back in with that deepest part of yourself on well what is this for you know where does this where does this, this worth, this idea of worth, where does it come from? Does it come from the way that I look or the way that I show up in my life or I don't know, any of those things, how much I sell my artwork for, <laughs> um, whether people are seeking me out and asking if I'd like to exhibit in their gallery. <laughs> no, it's, it's coming from your power to speak, your power to search your power to connect with other people and enable this in them as well because it's powerful. Like when you start finding what's really buried inside of you, you don't have to try. It just starts to awaken other people to their beauty. They can't help it. They go, oh, I'm feeling something I can't ignore and I need this. Like what has she got? And, and lots of us will start thinking, 
oh, well, she's she's got a studio space. Um, she's, you know, and we start like making it as if we can't have that thing, <laughs> that, ex, you know, exclusion, <laughs> self-exclusion. But it, it's just, it's an intimidation. It's a lie. It's not true. You are included. If you're feeling it, you are included. And, and it's just about giving yourself the opportunity to sink down to that deepest part of yourself and, and be present there. Stay there. Stay there in your, in your studio time. And you stay there with your thought life, with like what kind of thoughts am I thinking? And, and if you start thinking those product pressure thoughts, just catch yourself, just see them and just go, oh, there they are trying to run the show here <laughs> just steer it gently back to that inner child that that just wants to explore it just wants to um yeah dig for that treasure and and the discovery that happens that that inner child is just so um energized and charged up by those so you'll notice if you do give yourself um that free space unloaded that unloaded opportunity consistently you actually won't need me to tell you anything. That's the truth of it (laughs) because you'll just have so much um, innate wordless wisdom coming out of those experiences. So coming back to the experiences again, we've kind of come full circle to the first first thing, protecting your experiences. Yeah, so going deeper, yep. Yep. Um, the next one is I really struggle with executing my own ideas. I'll see something I love, feel inspired and have little to no idea how to make my voice heard. A sunset um, and I'll think, oh, gorgeous, look at those pinks, purples, yellows, and then I make mush. Yeah, so I think it does take skill to render a sunset and mix up the right colours and know what you're doing. So if your skill level isn't quite up to that, I, th- I would say that we need to start with just playing. And then when the play has brought that confidence back that I can show up and interact with these colours and with this paint, I can make something here. I've got something to say. <laughs> when you start to have those kinds of um, those, those feelings and ideas and truth, then it's time to go, right, let's look up someone who teaches how to paint the sky and see what they have to say. And it might not be everything. You'll have to still do a lot of processing on your own and apply different concepts and see if it fits with what you're doing and whether you like the look of that. But, um, yeah, so, so ultimately you are that, that vessel still. You're the one in control and in charge of directing this journey. But um, certainly incorporating other people who have skills that you want, that you want to learn from. Um, I think that's a bit of a just cut before the horse. Like I really love that and I just want to be able to manifest that in paint, <laughs> um, which is noble and it's beautiful and I have no, no doubt that one day you will be able to do that as long as you don't stop. And you might stop if you put the cart before the horse and and keep making mush. Do you see what I'm saying? It's that coming back, bringing it back to process, not kind of expecting this amazing product too soon. And I think this, this is a big thing too, that just with the way that our culture and society is set up, that everything is just like too instant and, and we just make this money and we go down the shops and we just get that milk instead of um, raising a cow and, um, you know, going through the motions of milking it every morning and understanding the entirety of the process. We've kind of stripped ourselves from the power of process. That is deep messaging. Like when, when we had to go and put seeds in the ground to have cucumbers in three months, when we had to do that and we had to think that through, that was a cognitive behavioural therapy happening there that we don't have anymore. And now we have to go and pay people lots of money to give us cognitive behavioural therapy because we're so distanced from, from just natural life process. <laughs> so I think I see this in art too where, where we just like, can I just pay the money and just have it? <laughs> um, well, no. <laughs> 
it's going to take three months for that seed to to grow and flourish and the flowers and the bees and the fruit and you know there's a process here so understanding and resting in that process that's a that's a big one isn't that huge like just knowing it's okay I'm so safe in process as long as I don't stop as long as I like keep watering that cucumber right (laughs) just keep showing up um I'm gonna have cucumbers soon and it is hard to wait I totally get that but I think yeah I call it process wisdom (laughs) <laughs> process wisdom has a lot to do with that delayed gratification and continuity in application like I'm still going to show up I haven't eaten a cucumber yet I'm really hungry can't wait to make my tzatziki <laughs> but I am not going to have it today and probably not next week either but I'm still going to show up and tend the plant it's the same thing okay so this lady said I'm picking up art again after a very long time and it feels so good. My biggest struggle though has much as, as much as I truly love creating is actually sitting down and putting in the brush miles. I procrastinate like crazy to do something that I love. It can be so hard. I think it's because I put pressure on myself and I'm afraid that what I do is a waste of time and will never be good enough to realize the dream of becoming an artpreneur. The struggle is real. I have dreams, but it feels impossible to get there. Any tips? Yeah, so this is this is the cucumbers again. If you're seeing it as just tending a plant rather than um, the weight of that, the end of the goal, I'm never going to get to that end goal if I don't you know, I'm not going to have cucumbers if I don't water them and like make sure that nothing's eating the flowers and all this stuff. So I think um, it, I would say that she's right in saying that it's the pressure, that she's kind of rebelling against that pressure. That's often the procrastination is, is a rebellion against the pressure that we, we're not even aware that we're putting on ourselves. It's like a naughty little kid just going, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> You're expecting me to do it. I'm not going to do it. Okay. Well, all right. Um, lower the expectation. Get rid of the expectation. Invite the child. And I think something amazing could happen that you couldn't actually predict. And that's the crazy thing too, that quite often we've got these goals which are amazing, but if if we stripped away all that expectation and just fostered what is and allowed it to grow. And I've got another metaphor coming here with um, like imagine you are going to plant something and and you want it to be amazing. You want your family to come over and and eat this fruit. You've got this, you know, um, an espaliered apple tree that you've got this beautiful wall and it's going to look so pretty in that spot. You're going to espalier it. So it's more like, you know, that thing that they do where it's more like a vine and and all the fruit is accessible. So you've got all these fancy plants, you've got the lattice ready and everything's, you know, it's going to be amazing. But then what's actually growing isn't responding to this treatment. It's not, it's not right, you know? Um, And, and so often we think, I'm a terrible gardener. I'm no good at espaliering anything. I can't grow fruit, whatever. Um, So we'll exclude ourselves rather than just look at what is and say, well, maybe this isn't what I thought it was. Maybe it's not a vintage apple tree that wants to be espaliered. Maybe it's um, a mulberry tree that wants to go over here on this space in the sunshine and just grow all wild and free and and it'll it'll be so rigorous growing in this spot because it's just perfect for it it'll be you know overladen with fruit so that the boughs are almost breaking and birds will come from miles around and like do you see the difference (laughs) so um letting go sometimes of of what your um that that projection that you've got for the future, which is often based on your perception of success in other people and kind of feeling a little bit jealous of that, like, I want that for myself. 
well, hang on, maybe um, if I look at what already is, like this is a great example for me, for instance, um, rewind 10 years, I would have said that my goal is to be able to sell my art for tens of thousands of dollars, right? <laughs> and that way I'll get to just paint every day and just do whatever I want. Um, so now my goal is to raise the vibration of humanity through creativity. And that is what gives me so much energy. If I had kept forcing myself into the corner of that, like you've got to sell your paintings so that you've got to paint good enough and be noticed by the right people and be able to sell your paintings for all this money. <laughs> like, and I mean, some people do that and it's great and good on them. And they've got, you know, that's their tree. <laughs> My tree wasn't that. My tree, I would have... I would have really suffered and struggled if I was still trying to do that. It would have killed me in my soul. But what, what feeds me and keeps me alive in my soul is what I'm made to do. Like that's my tree. That's, that's my thing. And I had to um, pay very close attention to what, what made me come alive. And it's similar, Ellen, to what you're saying about like in your process, you notice something in your first marks that, that sang to you that's what makes you come alive. So having this intuitive response um, strong and aware so that when you see something that's like, that's a clue, that's a clue for what my tree is. And, and then being able to um, give that tree what it needs. So rather than all this rigorous pruning, it might just need to be left for a bit. You know, you might just need to paint like for a bit and make a whole lot of mess and then line it all up after a month and have a look at it and see what you love. Like who, who knows what could come out of that? I can imagine if we just gave ourselves space to do completely unpressured art for a month as much as possible. You just need to make a pile of something. It doesn't matter what it is. We just need a pile this high <laughs> of papers. Like imagine what would be in there. There'd be a lot of mess. Like, I, yeah, I totally get that. But imagine what surprises, you know, and this is really coming back to this, um, you know, putting putting it in the brush miles because probably there's that pressure for something in particular and that inner child is just going, not going to do it. And, and we just need to remove all expectation and just come back to that that quantity in process, I just need to make a pile. The pile will show me. The pile will have wisdom that I couldn't, I just couldn't figure that out no matter what I did any other way. I've just got to do the brush miles. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> so I think, I don't know, how, how, do you guys have a problem with procrastination? No? Awesome. Okay, coming back to the chat. Oh, bye, Jay. She had to leave. Yeah, scarcity mentality. Absolutely. Yeah, because and and they they <laughs> they need us to be scared um, or be in scarcity, um, scared of of you know losing and missing out and all that kind of thing because it drives that consumerism that everything's kind of dependent on. Melanie says, what if your family is starving, waiting for the cucumbers to grow while you're just enjoying the process of tending them? And if they don't grow, you can't buy more seeds. Yeah, totally. And I'm the right person to talk to about this <laughs> because, man, I would have spent like 10 years really low income really low income for, for what I love. And I had to, I had to like figure out, well, is this really what I want to do? Do I just want to go get a job? Which I could have done and saved myself and my family that poverty. Well, it comes back to, well, what do you really want? What's, what's meaningful to you? Because something will open up and we didn't starve. We didn't starve. Um, I know that my kids um, were pretty annoyed because they wished that they could do things that their friends were doing and we're still waiting for this thing to happen. 
<laughs> you know, but um, I just kept, I kept being present in that too and, and looking for ways that I could um, perhaps release myself from pressure. You know, I didn't have a mortgage. I didn't do that. I've no doubt that in the next couple of years I'm going to be able to buy land and build a house. I just know that that's coming, but that's that's the cucumbers too. Like just um, understanding that things are going to take time and, and what kind of sacrifices do I need to make for this end goal? Because if it means like I know this is big stuff and you'd have to have your husband on board and all kinds of things, but do you see what I'm saying? Like, well, what do you want? Because if you really want this, then there's a way. And it might mean that you've got to think outside of the square, which is actually going to be really good for your creativity as well, for your, you know, that kind of thinking outside of the square and that confidence in, um, in processing that way and, and your authority that's going to develop in process, processing that way is actually what you need to make the thing work anyway. So no matter what comes against this, um, lots of times I've seen things coming against me as like, oh, this opposition, it's like so hard. (laughs) But when I look back, I did come through it and I found a way. And what I learned in the process of that, I use now probably a lot more than what I'm even aware of. Do you see what I'm saying? It's it's hard. It it is really hard. And, And that's why a lot of people don't do it but it's the only thing for me. It's, you know, it's brought meaning to everything and and there's no end to it. That's the thing too. (laughs) Like I'm just so excited to see what is going to happen because so many things have happened that I couldn't have predicted that are just perfect and beautiful and just brought so much, yeah, meaning. And, And not just meaning, you know, to my art and my work and like helping people be more creative, but making sense of my pain, that's been the hugest thing. Understanding what this medium of life is like and, and how things come together, how I'm orchestrating this, this interaction, like, like time and um, people and everything are just like more colours and, and media that is, you know, doing things and I'm collaborating with it. So um, making sense of the failures and the pain and the suffering that's come along with all that, that's huge. And I'm only just starting to unpack it. And I think like doing the Art to Heal a Heart membership um, has helped me just think it through a lot more about what I've actually done in this process to make good of pain and suffering. Yeah, so... I think part of the cucumber problem and the starvation of the family is also the fact that society has isolated all our families. Like we're we're not made to live like this. We're not made to live all isolated and everyone just doing their own thing. And, you know, we're we're tribal. We're supposed to be in, in tribes where you've got extended family, all the men go, you know, get the food together and, you know, like, do you see how much more efficient that would be emotionally? (laughs) Like if we just weren't alone, like trying to measure up all the time, trying to look like we're okay and uh, keeping up with the Joneses and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So I don't know if that answered your question, Melanie. (laughs) Sorry, I don't have a, like a (laughs) answer like that. (laughs) Um, Yeah. But I, like, I, I would do it all again what I did. Absolutely. I would (laughs) for what it's brought me. Um, Yeah. That's all my questions. We got to the end of it with five minutes to go. (laughs) Did anyone have any other questions or anything else to say? Oh, thanks Ellen. Yeah. The medium of life. Um, I think, this this truth can be applied to everything too. Like if you just think of a single conversation that you're having with somebody, if if it doesn't go well and you look back on it and you think of it in terms of you kind of um, interacting with words and that person is part of the media, <laughs> um, 
yeah, and just being able to take a load off everything, being able to just um, remove expectation and just be present to notice what's there that is beautiful that you can work with. That's a big, I'm still really struggling with that one, especially with my teenager. <laughs> but really good practice, right? Like that's the perfect person to have in my life to practice on. <laughs> Well, if no one has, I laughed really hard at that one. Sorry, I've got, I've had three teenagers. Uh, yeah, Ooh, good luck. <laughs> and my, yeah, my my eldest is, um, yeah, she's she's very she's alternative, so she's really like rebelling. It's all about rebellion. So I'm just like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> But you know what? I, yeah, I, I did it not not to the same degree, but I definitely did it. So it's probably a bit of karma too. <laughs> but no less um, enriching with wisdom through experience. As long as I'm see this experience thing, as long as I'm not making my experience with dealing with her or talking to her as being this high pressure trying to force something into a corner. Do you see, like, instead I just show up and say, hmm, what's here? What's here? What have I got? What, what's, what's good about this? What can I draw out of this? Why is it not working? You know, why does it feel yucky? Just kind of removing yourself from that, um, the ocean of emotion and, and just mm -hmm. viewing it from that observational stance. That's everything. And it really, really helps in your creativity. So I think you can see the things happening in your life and the things happening in your art as being like, you know, it, it can really work together to, to push you into places that you just could not have dreamed of. It's too beautiful. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. I loved this. I loved hanging out with you. I hope that that you feel enriched by something that was said here or I don't know, that maybe you have more questions. That's really good too. I would love to hear those too. And if, um, yeah, if you have anything more to ask or say, just email me. I'd love to hear it. The good news is that they grow up, yes. <laughs> it's just more cucumbers, isn't it? It's just that time <laughs> and that process. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for coming. And yeah, there'll be a replay of this if you're interested in hearing it all over again. Thanks for being a part of it. Thanks for your time. Much love to you guys. Thanks, Ange. Over and out. Have a great Bye. rest of the day, night, whatever it is. See ya. Thanks, Anne. You're so welcome. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you. Thank <clears throat> you.